My iCloud storage is full up. Google Drive keeps raising their prices and I'm just sick of paying a monthly fee for my own files forever. So this year I ditched both of those and I actually built my own cloud storage instead. This little box here is a NAS and I've been testing it to see if it can actually replace iCloud or Google Drive. You see, I'm constantly switching my phone between Android, iOS, I'm constantly switching between Windows and Mac. So in order to have all of my photos, videos and files all in one place that I can access no matter what device I'm using is really useful. Having a NAS is pretty much just like having your own personal cloud. It gives you so much freedom and way more control over your data. What we have here is a NAS that Ugreen have kindly sent over, which is their DH4300+. It's a great budget-friendly NAS if you're just starting out, and for a one-time payment of both the NAS and the hard drives you're going to need, it's significantly cheaper than paying yearly subscriptions for all the different cloud services out there, and also you control it as well. Now this NAS doesn't actually come with hard drives, but luckily Ugreen have come in clutch and sent me two 4TB Seagate drives. To install hard drives is pretty easy, you just slide out the trays, you screw in the hard drives to the trays with these included screws and a nice little screwdriver. The great thing about having four drive bays in this NAS is there's room for expansion in the future. In fact, this NAS can support up to 120 terabytes, which is quite a lot of storage and you're definitely not going to fill all of that up. Or you might be able to, but I'm personally not. So two hard drives, a total of eight terabytes is more than enough for all of my files. And then all you need to do is just plug the NAS into power, connect it to Ethernet, and you're pretty much good to go. I really like the look of this NAS. It just sits here. It doesn't scream server. It could be literally anything. You could have this around the house and no one will really question what it is. To get set up, you can actually use an NFC tag that they've put in the NAS. You simply just take your phone, tap it onto that sign, and it will give you a shortcut to download the Ugreen NAS app for both iOS and Android. The app makes setting up this so much simpler. And using the app, you just simply make an admin account, connect it to the internet, format all your drives, and you're pretty much good to go. Once you've got it all set up, you pretty much just go to the app center and install the photos app. And this is an absolute game changer because you can back up photos no matter what device you're on, whether it be Android or iOS. It backs up centrally to your NAS right here. You can also configure it to automatically back up in the background. So when I'm out and I take a photo, it actually connects to the NAS like it's my own server and actually stores all of my photos and videos on there. And it categorizes them all nicely as well, thanks to their AI album assistant. Not many NAS apps actually have this, but what it can allow you to do is search for people, places and things, which is so much better than just a basic photos app, which just sorts it in chronological order. It can be really difficult to find things. So the AI assistant is super useful and does rival stuff like Google Drive and iCloud as well. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the photo and video backup capabilities of this NAS, but I would prefer the Photos app to be a separate app on iOS and Android, rather than bundled in with the whole Ugreen app on the phone. Ugreen NAS also includes a security and permissions manager, which is great if you're a beginner. It just does it all automatically for you and ensures that you don't mess anything up. You can control who has access to what, who has read and write permissions, who's just got read only, and you can also create shareable links. So if you've got a photo or video from your phone, you can send that link to someone else and they can actually download it from that link straight off of your NAS. It's super cool. However, if you do have a lot of data to quickly put onto your new NAS and you're currently using something like Google Drive or Microsoft OneDrive, you can actually link your account to the Ugreen manager and actually pull all of your data and put it on the Ugreen NAS, which is absolutely brilliant. And you can have OneDrive or Google Drive directly in contact with your NAS and dumping all your files onto there. Now to access the NAS, you can either use the Ugreen NAS app on your phone, or you can even access it through the web portal. However, if you go out of the house, then the IP is not gonna work. So then what you have is a special link and it allows you to control the NAS and access it when you're not at home. The web portal is super nice to use. It's got a really nice clean background, really nice beginner friendly UI, 
and it allows you to do all of the features, change settings, and just mess around. In fact, I probably prefer the web portal over the app, but that's just me. If you're using Windows or Mac, you can actually find your NAS on the local network. You simply just go to the network section of your Finder or your Windows Explorer, and you'll find your NAS right there for you. It's pretty much just like having a hard drive plugged in, except it's over the internet, which is pretty cool. And yeah, you can access from there, log into your administrator account, and start managing, downloading, and uploading files. There's even a USB-C port on the front of the NAS, which allows you to plug in things like external SSDs or hard drives, and then you can pretty much just dump files from your hard drive onto your NAS directly. Now a NAS isn't just for backing up data, and you'll find when you get a NAS, it really is the gift that keeps on giving. If you go to the App Center, there are so many things that you can install on the NAS, it's kind of insane. For example, you can install Docker, which pretty much allows you to install apps in their own little containers. An example is you could host your own website off your NAS. You could host your own mailbox, although I probably wouldn't recommend that. You could even host your own VPN as well, or even run something like Pi-hole and block ads on your network. Although, don't do that. You can even host Nextcloud on your Ugreen NAS as well via Docker. And the other thing it can handle as well is possibly a Minecraft server because this actually has an 8-core CPU and 8 gigabytes of RAM, so it's definitely no slouch. It's even got a HDMI port on the back, which means that you could connect this to a TV and turn it into like a little TV streaming box. So no matter what type of videos or movies or whatever you've dumped on your NAS, you can navigate to them on your TV and play them. If you don't like the TV feature from Ugreen, you can also install Plex via Docker as well and pretty much run your own Plex server off a Ugreen NAS. Okay, now it's time for the downsides of having a NAS. Now before people go out into the comments and write exactly, I know what you're thinking. Having a NAS is definitely not perfect. For example, putting all of your files, photos and important documents on a NAS and trusting it is a recipe for disaster. Things can happen, fires, floods, hurricanes, tornadoes, whatever. You could even get struck by lightning and all your files will be gone. So it's important to make backups of your backups. And another thing you can do is buy another NAS and store it off site somewhere. And you can pretty much make that one a carbon copy of the one that you have at home. So no matter what happens to this one, you'll always have the other one, if you see what I mean. But yeah, otherwise you may have to resort to just using other hard drives to back up your backups. Another problem with NAS, and especially this one with hard drives in it, is the audible noise that the hard drives make. So no, it's not completely silent. There is a fan in it as well, although I really can't hear it at all. So yeah, I probably wouldn't recommend having this in your bedroom and sleeping next to it, but in another room, it would be fine. And also specific to this model, the DH4300 Plus, it doesn't actually have upgradable RAM. So you're stuck with the 8 gigabytes that they give you with no option to upgrade in the future, which is a little bit annoying. And I really wish they included an upgradable RAM slot. But all in all, NASs have come a really long way. When I first got my NAS, it was super difficult to set up. I had to watch endless YouTube tutorials on how to do stuff. But now something like this has come along, I can really start to recommend a NAS for just regular tech enthusiasts or people that just want to back up all their stuff and have more control over their data. For me, it's less about saving money, but more about freedom and control. Now, no matter what phone I'm using, what computer I'm using, I can ensure all of my photos, videos and files will be safe and stored on my NAS and can be accessed no matter what device I'm using. There's lots of privacy trade-offs with trusting a cloud company, so self-hosting might be the future. Thank you to Ugreen for sending this over to me. This Ugreen NAS is currently available on Amazon and also Ugreen store. And also Ugreen have got their full sale on right now, which means you can get 20% off a NAS if you use the links in the video description. Thank you to Ugreen for sending this over to me. I'm gonna go and play with it a bit more now and find out all the other cool things it can do. And I'll see you in my next video.